Welcome to today's show, Success in Intentional Lifestyle. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, a motivator, a leader, and a communicator. Good morning and welcome to Success and Intentional Lifestyle. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, and I am so happy that you've tuned in to hear today's show. Many thanks go out to everyone who's listening around the world. And, you know, I just looked at the numbers and the places where people are looking from, and we do literally have people from around the world. Uh, our top nine, besides the top one, which is the United States, the top nine are are countries all over in Europe, and uh, we actually have uh, Australia and South America listed in there also. So thank you so much for tuning in. I know you have other choices, but uh, I really appreciate you tuning in to hear uh, Success and Intentional Lifestyle. I hope your morning has been a great start to a wonderful day, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, mine was pretty good. Uh, mostly spent a lot of time working on uh, things for here at the job and uh, doing some ideas and just, you know, putzing around the house, I guess you would call it. <laughs> so uh, hope you had a, had a good weekend and those up in the Northeast, I hope the weather wasn't too bad for you. Um, you did get that uh, big Nor'easter that was uh, pretty significant for this time of the year. I hope you're all uh, faring well after that storm. You know, I watched the, uh, the Boston... Uh, Red Sox and Tampa Bay game on Sunday. And, and now you got to remember, this is the middle of May, okay? And it was raining and 40 degrees at 1 o'clock in the afternoon up there. And I'm thinking, holy smokes. And they, they, had, a, they had a wind, uh, I think they said it was 15 or 20 knots. And people were just bundled up and covered in, you know, rain ponchos and what have you. But uh, you got to be a diehard die to go to a baseball game in the rain and sit through the the, the drizzling rain and uh, 40 degree temperatures with a 20 mile an hour wind blowing on you. You've really got to be a diehard. So, and it, you know, it's the, the funniest thing about the, uh, the game was that it was the longest nine inning game that the Rays have ever played. It was four hours and 32 minutes, I think for nine innings unbelievable last uh, the last two innings the Rays scored uh, I think like seven or eight runs it was it was a good game you know you can find out more about success and intentional lifestyle by visiting the Jeff Heiser radio website at www.jeffheiserradio.com or by visiting facebook.com Jeff Heiser radio now if you're not sure how you spell this okay and I've been doing this every week for <laughs> I don't know two or three years now, three three years, it's www.jeffheiserradio.com. So go out there and check it out. If you uh, like it, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. You know, um, it got me thinking about uh, this weekend. I don't know if you've been watching the news. Uh, there was a... Um, this uh, cyber attack, and it released uh, what we call ransomware uh, virus on, I mean, it, there's, it was over thousands of machines that affected hundreds, if not thousands, of businesses around the world. And basically what it did was it attacked the um, computer system and then um, pops up this window and says, it encrypts all the files and it pops up this window and says, send us $600 or $300, whatever it was, or we will destroy all of your, your files. You'll never get them back again. And you've got X amount of time to do it. Well, if you've been following this on Friday, I believe it was Friday or Saturday, a young man in England actually found how to stop this. And the reason I bring this up is because he's only 22 years old. And you have to be, to do what he did, you have to be extremely mentally tough. And this is my reasoning why you have to be. Because the chances of this virus getting out, first off, uh, from your lab 
could be significant. Uh, the chances of this virus destroying your lab is is very relevant, and you have to be you have to be motivated to go and find what is causing it and how to stop it. You have to be confident enough to know how to do this in a way that uh, you're confident that you can stop it. You have to be focused enough to stay on the task of going after this virus until you find it. And then it's today, what we're going to talk about is composure. And you have to be composed enough that when you find it, that you don't blow it <laughs> and accidentally release it or whatever, or, or you think you have the, the fix and you let it out because you're so excited and it winds up you're doing more damage than the, the virus did. Now, the, the important thing about this, why I bring this up, is this young man found it. He actually found the, the problem. And what it was was the hackers basically left the back door. And that back door was, uh, the way the virus worked was it would come in, it infect your machine, and it'd go and try to connect to um, a website to tell the website that I've connected. And if it didn't, it fire off its bad software. Well, it could never connect because the the website that it was going to did not exist. And that's what this young man found out. And what he did was he said, okay, if it doesn't exist, it's doing this. What does it do if it does exist? So he registered the domain. He let it go to that domain. And guess what? It shut down the virus. But if he wouldn't have been able, if he wasn't motivated, confident, focused, and then composed, he would have never been able to be successful. And he's so composed, he won't even show his face because, well, for obvious reasons, for security reasons. But he, he, he's a, he's a humble person, I guess, and you know he's just out to, uh, to to beat the hackers to show that he's motivated, confident, focused, and composed in the fact that he can beat them. And he did this time. And let's see what happens next time. You know, when the going gets tough, how do you respond? How would you have responded to the uh, virus attack? I, I would have been fairly confident, motivated. I, I mean, that's my prior life. My prior life has been that in computers. I mean, um, my... My job for a long time was encryption and stopping attacks and um, how to protect systems in, in a manner that, uh, you know, we wouldn't have losses. And for when I left my previous company, uh, we had processed over 20 million transactions without any um, loss from hackers or from, you know, being... Um, having anything stole, stolen from the uh, system. Now, I'm going to ask you again. When the going gets tough, how do you respond? How would you have responded to this if you got this ransom note that came up and said, you, all your files are going to be gone unless you pay us $600 in the next three hours? You know, there's a saying. They say, when the going get, gets tough, the tough get going. Are you tough? Your composure, which is the fourth part of the mental uh, toughness series that we're talking about, is your ability to remain calm and in control when the going gets tough. You know, I remember sitting in, in meetings and when I was very, when I was young, I guess, um, I would say I was immature in the business world. Um, <laughs> some will find that hard to believe, but I believe there were, it, it, I, I believe I still am to some degree. But I remember being, uh, I guess you, you could say uh, sandbagged or blindsided by the client in that they had only wanted to hear my proposal because they were going to use my proposal to leverage it against the other uh, 
vendor or the other supplier that they had uh, been considering. And I found out. And I, I lost my control in, in, in some of those meetings. I've lost my control in some of the meetings when people that were in the meetings uh, in the company would say ridiculous things or make ridiculous claims. And what I found out is losing control never won that argument for me. And it was a hard lesson to learn. Your composure in difficult situations many times is, is what will be a determining factor in whether you win or lose whatever it is. The argument, the, the deal, the job, the circumstances. Um, think about this. If, if you are, um, if a bad guy comes up to you and you're not composed, you're, you're highly trained. You're highly trained. You, you know how to defend yourself. You know how to disarm people. You know how to, to, to end the situation uh, successfully for you. But if for whatever reason you do not remain composed, full of composure and self-control, you will lose. Because the whole idea behind those things is to remain in control. Again, composure can be the determining factor whether you win or lose. Composure can be defined as your ability to stay in control of yourself in a manner that allows you to continue to perform at an optimum level, regardless of the situation. You know, I can look back at many times in my life that if I didn't, if I hadn't remained in control, in control of my composure, if I hadn't remained composed in a way that allowed me to continue with, with what I had to do, I wouldn't be here right now. I knew that for a fact. I knew for a fact that when the terrorists stopped our van, if I had freaked out, we would have never got out with fire extinguishers. I would have either been a hostage or a statistic. Instead, we remained composed. We, we, we thought clearly, and we stayed in, in, in control of ourselves and our emotions. See, as we grow and, and learn through our experiences, we learn how to respond in, in certain situations. We start that from when we were just little babies. It works, it works kind of like this. Your brain and your mind are actually two separate things and that's that's a whole topic for another show i'm not going to go into it here but let's just focus uh, let's just say that the brain and the mind are really two separate things the body obeys the brain and the brain obeys the mind and as a result there are certain emotions and reactions that your brain automatically produces in response to certain situations yeah you you feel it when you, when you um, are confronted or if you're um, in a place that you know is not a good place to be and somebody confronts you, certain things happen in your body. You'll feel, some people say, I can feel the hair on the back of my neck go up. Some people say the hair on my arms go up. Some people say I get goosebumps. Some people say I get sick to my stomach. Some people say I get uh, real um, anxious. Those are all automatic responses that your brain is sending to your body in certain situations. But knowing how all this works and what responses will occur during certain situations gives you an advantage. So if you're in a meeting and certain things are said or you're attacked verbally or <laughs> it could be physically, um, you will know how to respond. I can tell you one time I was a, a, uh, I used to be a mediator for a court and, um, went through this long mediation. It was, it was a difficult mediation. And, uh, the one individual was an old man and, uh, um, an old black man. And the other individual was a motorcycle, um, gang member. And he was a huge huge dude he was like six foot eight probably well over 300 pounds and 
at one point I had the one man, the older gentleman leave the room and I had to ask the biker some questions. And I asked him uh, some very difficult questions, remaining composed, and he went berserk and he came after me and he wanted to, he really wanted to hurt me. And fortunately, you know, we, we had a way of getting the, uh, the jail, um, the, the court bailiffs or the court, uh, officers to come in and subdue him. It took six of them, but it would have been very easy for me to lose my composure like he did. And I would have been going to jail that day with him because I would have, if I would have responded in the way that I was conditioned to respond, I would have had to neutralize that situation. Instead, I remained composed in a way that allowed me to remain in control and notify the court officers to come in and, and take this man out. And so that's the opposite of, you know, when you're, you're scared or the going gets tough. I was trained in a way to to defend myself and to protect myself. And if I would have responded in that way, it would have been bad for both of us. And knowing that allowed me to remain in, com in control of myself and, and composed in a way that it was a good outcome for me. I win. See, this, this advantage enables you to deal with with expected responses by overriding your brain's response. And, and, and it allows you to remain in control of your actions. When you lose control of your actions and you allow your emotions to take over, it's never a good outcome. It never is a good outcome because you're allowing your emotions to dictate what is right and wrong for you. And for the most part, that is not a good thing to do because sometimes your emotions aren't right. And you, you're not thinking when you respond with your emotions because your emotions is an automatic response from your brain. And so you haven't given your mind enough time to think things through and you're just allowing yourself to respond. In other words, you're losing your control. See, composure enables you to have clarity of your thoughts and and the ability to maintain your focus during very difficult situations composure is not an easy thing it's it's very very easy to lose composure but think about this think about if if the 18 year olds that have been trained to go off and fight in war and they can remain composed on the battlefield in a way that allows them to win, I would say, 99.99% of the time, you could do the same. You can do the same. See, composure promotes sound decision-making when it counts most, when it counts in, in, in your life, when it counts in, in making the deal, when it, it counts... Uh, for saving your life. Your brain will tell you that you're too cold or you're too hot, you're too tired, you're too weak, you're too wet, you're too old, you can't go on, or you just don't have what it takes. Individuals who listen to these messages coming from their brain are the ones who lose their composure, their focus, and eventually give up and in the end quit. Now, last year, when I went to the World's Tough Mudder uh, Championship, I, I sat there and I could pick out every one of them that were like that, that had lost their composure. And I could tell you whether they were going to finish or not. Because what happens is it starts with, man, I, I don't know, I... I just, I, I, I just, I, I don't know what's happening to me. I'm losing, I'm kind of losing my control and, and, and I, I, it, it's cold and I, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know if I can go on and they just start losing it. They lose their control. And when they start losing the control, it becomes easy. It becomes easy to back out of what you've committed to do, whatever that is. 
in whatever situation that is. See, in, in that championship, during the, the, light, the daylight hours, everybody was fine. Everybody was pretty well on a level playing field, and they were, they were really competing well. As soon as the, the sun went down and it got dark, the game changed. It changed in a way that, uh, for me, was rather pre uh, predictable because I've been there before. I, I know what happens with people in the dark. They, they don't like the dark. And when you don't like the dark, even if you're a, a premium, superb physical specimen of an athlete, if you are got problems with the dark, you're going to have problems with the cold. You're going to have problems with being wet. You're going to have problems with being tired. And that's just the way it goes. But the ones that were able to maintain their control over this were the ones that continued on. It was amazing to watch. However, if you think about this, those who can maintain their composure are just the opposite of the ones that can't. They, it, literally, they're the opposite. They, they can maintain their focus. They can continue with the tasks at hand. They, they, they are very, very easily the ones that succeed. See, by remaining composed, they can dig deep, way deep, deep, deep down inside of themselves to find the strength needed to finish. You see it a lot. You, see, you know, you see it in, in people where there's accidents and a car, you know, is on the kid or on the adult or whatever, and two people or a person actually lifts the vehicle and they say, well, how did he do that? How did she do that? How did they do that? Well, first off, they remain composed because if they would have lost control and lost composure, they would have never even attempted to do whatever it was that they did. When you see the police officer or the, uh, the civilians running towards a burning car and pulls the, the guy out of the car after they bust out the window and the car is in flames like crazy, that was only able to be done because the individuals that did it remained composed as they, they went after trying to get the person out of the vehicle. You know, over the years, there have been many, many times in my in in my life where my brain has told me I just couldn't go on. But my mind, my mind told me to continue. Don't stop. I think back to my military time and there were times that if I would have stopped, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You just got to keep pushing on. Got to keep pushing on. Got to keep pushing on. At some point, we will all experience situations in which our brain tells us we just can't go on. In those situations, we must ensure our mind remains in control, providing us with the composure that allows us to continue until we've overcome whatever the challenge is that, that faces us. When we can train our mind in a way that allows us to remain composed, Regardless of the situation, regardless of what faces us, we ensure our ability to maintain self-control, composure. To a large degree, our ability to succeed depends on our mind that is conditioned to deal with difficult, tough situations in a composed, self-controlled manner. The important thing to remember is this, is that if you can stay composed, you can better recognize the situation or situations that will trigger your brain's response mechanisms and your psychological responses that directly impact your ability to perform. When you know this, you're better prepared to deal with the challenging situations. There are many, many examples of how composure has defined past leaders, current leaders, great athletes, and scholars, you name it. Lincoln is a good example. Look at that man. During his most trying hours, 
where the country was literally split in half and was about to disintegrate on itself. He remained patient. He remained poised. He remained in self-control. And history shows it made all the difference. Look at the athletes. Look at, look at if, if you just look at the games that were played this past weekend, we'll just use the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays games in Boston. The difference in the game was the pitcher. And the difference in the pitcher was on Friday, Tampa won. And they were down, they were 5-4, I believe it was, or something like that. And their closing pitcher came in, and the, the, the noise level in Fenway Park was so loud, and they were jeering this guy. And after the game, he said he just closed it out. The next game, the next day, was a pitcher by the name of Snell. Now, this kid, young kid, pitched one or two good innings and then pitched the ball that was hit for a home run. After that hit, he lost his composure, and he gave up a whole lot more hits and a whole lot more runs. And as a result, he completely lost his composure, and the Rays sent him back down to the minor league. The pitcher from the night before said the difference between him and that pitcher is that he did not hear the crowd. He remained in control of his thoughts and what he had to do out on the mound. Composure. You see it in, in football. When a quarterback loses his composure, he usually loses the game. When a receiver loses his compo co composure, he normally doesn't make the catch. If you fail to maintain your composure, you're not only likely to injure yourself physically or mentally, or others physically or mentally, but it's almost certain that you'll injure yourself physically or mentally. Now, I'm going to give you an easy way to remain in composure in difficult situations. An easy way to remember it. If you remember these three key things to composure. Control your thoughts, control your temper, and control your tongue. When you can control these, you win without regret. Now, I do this show all about asking the questions and presenting the ideas that will help you improve your life. It's up to you to take the steps. It's up to you to remain composed and do what you need to do. Are you willing to take on the hard work? I know you have the potential to. Are you ready to stay composed and self-controlled enough to take that step? See, I truly believe in your greatness and your ability to stay in control, composed in a manner that allows you to take that step and realize your, your greatness. Thank you for joining me here this morning. Next week, we're going to talk about resilience, our last part in mental uh, toughness. And when you put these all together, motivation, uh, confidence, uh, I forget all of them now. <laughs> yeah, how embarrassing. It's uh, motivation, confidence, focus, composure, and resilience. You are able to develop your mental toughness. If you have those all in check and all, all pretty well worked out, you will be a mentally tough person. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, and this has been Success and Intentional Lifestyle. Please tune in again next Monday right here at 8 a.m. for another show of Success and Intentional Lifestyle right here on Talk Network Radio. Now, one other thing is if you go out to my website at www.jeffheiserradio.com, J-E-F-F-H-E-I-S-E-R, radio.com, you'll see the transcripts of this on my blog. And so you can either read it or do what you want with it. Um, and you will also have the audio available to listen to on demand. So until next week, stay safe, have a great day, 
And remember, nothing happens without you taking a first step. God bless. That's our show today. Remember, you have the power to live intentionally. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, and I hope you will join me here again next week. Till then, stay safe, be intentional, and spread the word. Success is an intentional lifestyle.